Welcome to the Turabian workshop. Um, I'm sure most of you are here because you absolutely love Turabian or because you have to. But either way, we're going to learn Turabian and you will love it by the end of this presentation. So here's a picture of the Turabian uh, manual. You can get this at a bookstore generally for 20 to 30 dollars. Um, it's highly encouraged. Um, you know, we can, we can do a lot through these slides, but if you want to really learn and master Turabian, highly encourage you to get this book. So let's start. The general formatting requirements. Uh, it's going to be one inch margins. That's typical throughout uh, many papers, APA or MLA. Uh, 12 point times new Roman font. Um, this is never going to change. Uh, uh, throughout any of your papers, this is always going to be your formatting unless your professor says so. Um, everything is going to be double spaced. Generally, this is, this is going to be what you're going to be used to, except for for block quotes, um, those will be single spaced. Um, so get used to that. Um, page numbers. There are no page numbers on the title page. Um, we'll see on another slide that we stress this highly. There are no page numbers. Um, there are going to be lowercase Roman numerals in the front matter. Now, what's the front matter? Anything after the title page, but everything before the main part of your writing is included as the front matter. Uh, that might be called the glossary, or you may have a table of contents. Um, that's going to be what's considered the front matter, and the page numbers for those are going to be in Roman numerals, uh, not in regular Arabic script. So remember that. Um, Arabic numerals are used throughout the main body. Um, so yeah, it's different from the, the front matter. Um, there's three possible locations that you can have your page numbers. You can have it centered or flush right to the header, or you can have it centered and flush left of the footer. Um, I personally have not been used to um, flush left of the footer. I think what you'll commonly see uh, is flush right of the header or centered. Um, uh, now here, uh, this is a PC. If for Mac, it's a little bit different. Um, but for wanting to make uh, page breaks, um, so let's say you have done the front matter uh, and you have your Roman numerals and you want to start the main part of your paper, which you use Arabic uh, numerals. This is where you're going to want to put in a page break because it will break the page of the formatting so you can start a new formatting setting. Also here, uh, page numbers. Um, you can put them at the top of the page. And when you hit top page, it'll allow you to either put it to left, center, or right. And that's the same for the bottom page. Uh, it's very, very, very simple. Link to previous. This is a tricky little guy. Um, what will happen is when you do a page break, it will want to copy the format that you had before. Um, so it's, it's going to automatically already link to previous. So what you're going to want to do when you do that page break is unclick that link to previous. Um, and it will always be, that's the automatic setting. So um, it's going to be something that you're going to have to remember, um, or else you're going to have uh, the formatting of, of what you had before, and it could be frustrating. So link to previous, make sure that is turned off. Block quotes. Uh, I think you might be used to block quotes being 40 or more words. In Turabian, it's five or more lines. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, as you see on the example here, it is single spaced, indented, no quotation marks. Make sure you remember that. And a footnote at the end. Now there are three major sections uh, to a Turabian paper. You have the title page, which will also include the front matter, which we discussed uh, earlier, your main body, uh, and the bibliography. Now for the title page, there's generally two formats. Um, generally, for most of you, we'll be using the, the class paper uh, formatting. Um, once you get into working for a, a PhD, you'll get used to the, the dissertation style. Uh, again, stressing no page number on the title page. Um, again, a lot of this is dependent upon your teacher. Sometimes your teacher will have a different formatting style uh, that they specifically want. Um, so that's something to, to email your professor and make sure that you're doing the formatting that they, that they desire. Here are some examples of the uh, title page, the class paper, and the dissertation. Um, really, the difference is um, you're just adding a little bit more information. You're adding your, your university, uh, where it is, um, 
and just a little bit, a little bit more information. I, I personally use this um, for my papers. I think it looks a lot more professional. Um, yeah, it just looks better. Main body, there are no st uh, strict format for headings and subheadings. Uh, this is very different, um, such as in APA, where they have very strict formatting rules. This you can be a little bit more free, which is why I like Turabian personally. Um, the only thing about it is I would stay consistent. If you have a style of formatting, do that throughout your whole paper um, so it looks consistent. Most commonly uses footnotes in Turabian. The first citation includes full bibliographical information. So when you're sourcing, or when you're citing your source, you're going to want to put all the information on that first source. Once you've cited a source at first, then you can use a short form uh, of that source. And we'll get into what that looks like a little bit in a little bit. When you are using the same source uh, consecutively, you're going to use what's called an IBID. It means in Latin, the same place. Um, so if you're using the same, the same source, you're just going to use IBID instead of using a short form. And there are different ways to use IBID that we'll discuss in a, in a little bit. So now that we're talking about footnotes, what really are footnotes used for? Like we've talked about, it refers to the original source. Um, whether you're quoting or you're paraphrasing someone else's work, um, you're going to use footnotes for Turabian. Uh, sometimes they'll be used for, thir for further explanation of the text. Um, if there are terms such as Septuagint, not everyone's going to know off the top of their head what that term means. Um, so sometimes you're going to want to further explain um, as it relates to your text uh, some words. Also, it could reference further information. Sometimes your paper or the source will, um, will talk about different information that's, uh, that's relevant to, to your topic. Um, and sometimes footnotes are used for that as well. Inserting footnotes, it's pretty, pretty simple. You're going to hit the reference tab. Uh, I know it's a little different with Mac, but we're, we're sticking with PC for right now. Um, hit the reference tab and insert footnote um, wherever you've paraphrased or you've quoted. It's pretty, pretty simple. Footnotes continued. The uh, first reference, again, you're going to cite all information. You're going to put the first name first. And from there, you're going to file the style format, depending if it's a book, journal, article. Um, further references. When you've already cited your information, your reference is going to look like this. Author's last name, comma, short version of the title, comma, and page number, period. <coughs> Depending on how short the title is already, um, you might just use the full title. Sometimes it has a very long title. Um, you can just use a, a short version of that. Consecutive citing of the same source. This is where IBID comes in. You guys might not be as familiar with this. When you have sourced, uh, when you've used a source already, you, you don't need to put that source down again. So you can use IBID um, with the comma if it's on the same page. Uh, you don't have to add a page number or anything like that if it's from the same page. So you got the information from page 69 in, in your first source, and you're going to use some more information from that page. You just have to put IBID. Now if you're going to use a different page, let's say page 70, you want to put IBID, comma, and the page number. Avoid using if referring to a note on a different page of your text. Uh, this is important. When you're using, when you're using the, the source, and you're going on to a new page, you don't want to use IBID as your first source, um, as, your first, as your first footnote. Uh, it looks unprofessional. Um, it's just not right formatting. Um, so in, instead, you're going to use a short version um, of, that, of the title that you used before, and then you can go on and use IBID afterwards. Um, general formatting for footnotes, you're going to use 10 or 12 point font. I personally use 11. I think it looks good. Um, and 12 points sometimes kind of looks like the text already. Um, so I would generally go for maybe a 10 or 11 uh, type font. Uh, footnotes are single spaced. Um, the first line is indented. And we'll kind of see the difference between this and a bibliography a little bit later. Um, the space between each footnote 
This one I see the most when people come in and bring papers to me. Um, this is, I see, like the biggest problem. Um, once you've sourced, once you put a source down and you're going to your next one, make sure there is a space in between. And each footnote ends with a period. Now, here are some different uh, types of sourcing for books. Uh, books with a single author or editor. Um, this is going to be the general formatting, and I'll just go through it a little bit. Uh, you're going to have your author with a comma. Now this, well, sorry, this is specifically an editor, not an author. Um, see the ED? That signifies that that is the editor. Um, if it was the author, there would not be an, an ED there. Um, so you have your editor. Um, the title of the book, which is going to be italicized, and then the publication information, where it was publicized, the publication, um, and the date in which it was publicized. And that is all going to be within that parentheses, followed by a comma and the page numbers. Uh, generally, with anything with books, that's what it's going to look like. Um, now the difference between Turabian and, and possibly like an, a, uh, an APA or an MLA is it uses a lot of commas in the footnotes. As you'll see by the editor, there's a comma after, after the title, there's nothing and it goes straight into the publication information followed by a comma. Um, this is important to pay attention to because when we go into the bibliography, that information is going to change a little bit. Um, a book with two or three authors. Here we have two different authors. Um, for here, if you have two authors, use an and. Um, I haven't seen a lot of instances where ampersands are used. Um, so generally use the and and include the author. Followed by, again, the comma. And you have the title of the book here, the title size, the publication information, and the page number. So again, it looks very similar to, to the first one that we did. Uh, a book with four or more authors. Now here, you have the first author mentioned in the book, and then you have this strange little, little word called et al. Um, that means all together in Latin. And so what they're doing here is they're just concisely putting all the other authors together so you don't have to source it in the footnote. Um, so what you want to do is just put the first author and then just put et al. It's pretty simple. Um, again, same formatting commas. The italicized uh, title of the book, publication information, and the page number. Here we have an instance where an editor as well as an author is used. Uh, you have the author, title of the book. Now here you have, after the title of the book, you have the editor information, editor Robert Morrison. Um, other than that, all the information is the exact same. Question? Does it matter which side of the editor the ED goes on? It will go after the book. It will go after the book title. Yeah. Um, yes, a book with an edition number uh, similar to the editor. Um, you're going to have the, the, uh, the author's name with the title of the book. And you have second edition, third edition, fifth edition, whatever edition it is, that is going to go after the title of the book, followed by publication information and the page number. Um, now here, this gets a little bit different. A book with a single chapter in an edited book. You have the author, and then in quotations, you're going to have the title of the chapter that you used in that book, followed by in the title of the book, which is italicized. Um, in this case, after the, after the book, we see in the editor. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. <laughs> um, but then the publication information is included after that. So it's very, very similar. You'll, once you get used to one, you kind of get used to all of it. Books that are electronic. Um, again, very similar. The difference here is um, this source was actually found on a Kindle. So you can, you can source material on Kindles. Um, as well, in the eighth edition, what was changed, you can use social media also as sources. But let's go to the second one, a book that was found online. Here we have two editors, and following the, the title, you have the same publication information. The only difference here is that they're, they're referencing a certain, a specific chapter. Um, so there's going to be a chapter number and a document number with that. That information will be found online wherever you find the source. Um, 
Now when you're working with sources that are on the internet, you always, always want to put an access date whenever you accessed uh, this information. So in this case, it was access October 15th, 2011. Um, any, any internet usage of finding sources, you're going to add that access date. As well as um, for this site, it was, used on, it was found on a URN on the website, so you just add in the URN. Um, third one, a uh, little bit difference, a little bit of a difference. Mostly everything is the same, if you notice, the publication information and the title. He's got the access um, date here. The difference is this was found on a, on a database. So we have, hi, come on in. Um, so we have ProQuest eBrary. That's where this article or this book was found. So you want, all you have to do is source the database. Journal article that is in print. Again, very similar information. You have, a, you have the author. Um, the, the title of the, of the article is going to be in the quotations, followed with the comma. Now here you see uh, the comma inside of the quotation marks. Remember that always. <laughs> Whenever you have quotation marks um, and you're going to move on to the next bit of information, always have the comma inside the quotation. Um, Again, the journal which it was from, Journal of Gender Studies, is italicized. Um, now with journal articles, you're always going to have a volume number and a, and a, and a number source. Um, so here it's volume number 20, number 2. Um, you're, you'll be able to find that on any article that you use. Um, so be, be sure to include that information along with when it was publicized, which is June 2011. And that specifically will be in parentheses with a colon in uh, the page number. Sure. You just mentioned about the quotation mark. Did you repeat? Yeah, the quotation. See, there's a comma at the end of here. That comma is always going to be inside the quotation. It's never going to be outside. Yeah. Um, so with articles, a little bit different than, than books, a little bit different information uh, in the way that it's structured. Um, but for the rest of articles, it's going to be very similar. Um, again, for journal articles online, very similar to what we just looked at. You have the author, you have the uh, title of the article in quotations uh, with uh, where the journal is from. In this case, there is no volume number. If you don't see volume number, you can't do anything about it. That's just the way it is. Um, just put the, the number uh, for uh, with that or whatever number it was with. Um, again, with the, the published um, date, you're going to put that on there. With the, with the number of the page number, sorry. Now this is an online article, so again, like we said before, since it was accessed on the internet, you have to put an access date. So always remember that. Now this is a little bit different, um, this little DOI. It's called a, a digital object identifier. Um, it's similar to an ISBN for a book, where you can type it on the internet and you can find it. The DOI works this, the same way. Um, so if there is a DOI, you can, you can use that as your, your ending source um, instead, of a, instead of a URL. Uh, for the next one, a very similar again. person has formatted it correctly. Quote, the comma is inside the quotation. Uh, they have the volume numbers. Here, the only difference is they accessed it from a database. So that's all you need to do. If you found it on Academic One file, you just have to put it in Academic One file because that's where you found it. Websites, uh, somewhat similar to what we looked at before. You have the author, you have the, you have the title again in quotations, um, and then you have where it was found, the University of Wisconsin-Madison News, um, which will not be italicized. It's the only difference with the website. Um, you are also going to add in when they publicized um, the, the information on the website. Again, with when you accessed the information, and then with the website. For the second, here's an example of when an author is not available. You don't see an author because McDonald's is a corporation. Um, so McDonald's is not the author. Um, so in this instance, toy safety is going to be um, at the start is going to be used as your author um, in quotations. 
All the information is the same with the URL at the end here. Biblical references, especially for you that will be in Bible classes, you only have to include uh, Bible, uh, biblical references in footnotes, which is great. It makes it much easier when you're doing your bibliography. Um, make sure you use an abbreviated form of the book. If you're citing from the book of Peter, just put P-E-T. Um, and then list which version you are using in the first citation. After that, it's understood what version you're using until you decide to use a different one. Bibliography. Um, you're going to have bibliography centered at the top of your page. Um, again, formatting with that is different depending on your teacher. Generally, I have it um, in bold. Some will have it in, in uppercase letters as well. Um, but that's just different formatting for different teachers. Um, uses the same information as the initial footnotes, yet with minute differences. Now, again, I said that to pay attention how it's formed in footnotes because it's very, very similar to what it's used in bibliographies. Um, in the bibliography, you're going to uh, sort it by al alphabetical order, by last name. Uh, only the first author's name, only the first author's name is reversed. Um, so where we had the, um, where we had in the footnotes, we had the, the author's first name came first. You're going to reverse that in the bibliography. Hanging indent, um, we'll kind of get into what that looks like in a little bit. Um, but again, that's a little bit different from how the footnote is, is made. Um, it's going to, the space is going to be on the bottom and it's going to almost as if the thing's going to be hanging, which is where we get the hanging indent. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit more what that looks like in a minute. Uh, multiple works by the same author. Um, you're going to put the author's name on the first citation, but after that, you can use what's called a 3M dash, uh, which replaces the name. So take, for instance, if you are citing J.R.L. Tolkien um, and you cited Lord of the Rings, you can then, if you are sor sourcing, the next source is going to be the Cimmerillion, which is also one of his works. You do not have to put his name. You can just put in this 3M dash. Uh, which makes it very easy, just makes it that much easier. So, rules of thumb. You reverse, with the, when it comes to the bibliography, you're going to reverse the first name only. You're going to change commas to periods between items. And you're going to remove the parentheses and remove specific page numbers. So this is what this looks like. If you remember the first one, we had commas behind behind everything, and we also had parentheses for the publication information. Well, in this case, the, or the, the commas are gone, and what's in there instead are periods. So Gladwell, uh, Malcolm, editor, period, instead of a comma. And then you'll have your title of your, of your book, where you had a space and your parentheses, instead there will be a period. Um, the parentheses are then taken away, and the page numbers are taken away. Um, again, for the second one, book with two or three authors, very similar. The same things are being switched out. Uh, publication information, the parentheses are gone, and the page numbers are gone. Um, so really what you can do, and is generally what I do when I'm doing my bibliography, is you can take your footnote, you can copy and paste it, and put it into your bibliography, and then you can format it from there because the information really has not changed other than those very small details. Um, so it really makes making a bibliography very easy. For a book with uh, four or more authors, where we had that et al, um, you actually will list out those names in the bibliography. Again, here at the journal article, um, the commas are switched out. Mostly everything stays the same. Mostly everything stays the same uh, when it comes to a journal article, other than those commas are switched. Again, with the article that is online, the same thing. Those commas are switched out for periods. Again, with this, with this third example, everything has stayed the same. It, it looks very, very similar, except those before 
after the, the author and after the title. And you see here where we have the comma inside the parentheses, now it's a period. Um, so I'm just making that very evident that the commas are now periods. Um, the parentheses are gone. Um, now with articles, the page numbers will actually stay. Um, that's the only difference with, uh, with journal articles. With websites, usually only include in footnotes unless it is critical to your argument or is frequently cited. Um, generally, when you're, use, when you're doing Turabian, um, the website is used for uh, factual information. Um, and I don't know, I personally don't like using websites unless I have to or again, like it's critical to, critical to your argument. Other than that, I would use more academic sources. Again, the information um, compared to the footnote to the bibliography is almost identical other than the fact that the commas are now periods. And same with the second example here. Uh, here's uh, an example of the big bibliography. You have the bibliography centered um, at the top. There's the example of the hanging indent um, that I made mention. It's very similar to if you're doing APA or MLA um, in the references page. It's, it's the same, same thing. Yes? In the rule of thumbs, when you said reverse the first name, what do you mean? Um, when you are having, yeah, when you have more than one author, okay. the, only the first author's name will be reversed. But after that, the author's names will stay the same. Yeah. Um, Again here, the, uh, the sources are in alphabetical order, and you have an example of J.R.L. Tolkien's works that are used, that 3M dash, um, for multiple works by the same author. Again, also, uh, you notice that there is a page number. The page numbers do run into the bibliography. Again, the only thing that doesn't have a page number is the title page. If you want to know more information, there's, there's definitely more information um, that we could not cover in a 30-minute presentation. Um, so if you want more information about Turabian, you can actually go to the website. Um, and I recommend it because it's great. Um, and it is the updated 8th edition. Uh, this is our information. If you ever want um, any kind of tutoring or help with your papers or for formatting, uh, we have the Undergraduate Writing Center, the Graduate Writing Center, and if you are online, we also have help for that. Um, I encourage you to utilize uh, our services um, because we can, we can be a good help for you, especially with the formatting issues. Um, so if you need that information, that information is there. You can also get it at the front desk.